Greetings, and welcome to Xenos Analysis. I am Colonel Ichabod Rhombus, and today we will not be looking into the material aspects of the foul Xenos race dubbed Tyranid, but rather the immaterial, or more specifically, their predominant psychic outpourings. There are a number of Tyranid bioforms that have the capability to wield psychic abilities, the Neurothrip, the Zoanthrope, the Maliceptor, the Hive Tyrant, the Swarmlord, the Broodlord, or whatever else they may later design. And just as there are many bioforms capable of psychic violence, there are as many Hive Fleets that each contribute their own subtle permutations to the power of the Swarm. Nevertheless, there are several fundamental disciplines that all Tyranid psychers are grown with. The shadow in the warp is a massive field of influence generated by that abominable intellect known as the hive mind. It extends out across space and heralds the approach of the Tyranid hive fleet. It is presently unknown whether this is simply the psychic static from broadcasting its intent across the countless bioforms under its dominion, or a deliberately generated effect because like a predator using a sting or shock or venomous bite to incapacitate or paralyze its prey to allow for easier consumption, the shadow in the warp has an eerily similar effect on the prey world. Navigators go blind, the weaker of their number going insane, or they simply perish, and so warp travel is denied. Escape is now impossible. Communications are also cut, as astropaths are blocked from sending transmissions. Calls for help will now go unanswered. Terrible dreams and debilitating nightmares rage across the populace, and even the very ground becomes seismically active as the world itself trembles at the approach of the Great Devourer. Doom is now assured. The shadow in the warp also makes it laborious for non tyranid psychers to manifest their abilities, as millions of alien, eldritch thoughts ripple through their psyche. It also increases the risks of catastrophe from such efforts. The warp is a seething and unpredictable well of unimaginable power, so acting as a conduit to bring such energies into the material realm is fraught with hazard and can sometimes cost the Psyche their very existence. The shadow in the warp makes such an eventuality even more probable. For the Tyranid psionic beings, the shadow in the warp bears no such problematic influence and can even enhance their casting abilities. Tyranid psychers draw from a well of various psionic powers that we will now cover individually each having been crafted to suit a specific need. Using the synapse beasts that extend and regulate its will, the hive mind invigorates and reinforces the flesh of its creations, rendering them highly resilient to all forms of physical and psychic abuse. Bullets bounce from their bodies, blades scrape ineffectually against their chitin, even explosions wash across their anatomy with greatly reduced effect. This can allow whole swarms of gaunts to reach enemy lines with minimal losses. It also protects monstrous beasts targeted for destruction. Or it can defend species like the Tyrant Guard to all but guarantee that they can get their malignant and homicidal charges into the midst of the targeted race. Pure unbridled panic is thrown forth as a catastrophic wave of dismay and despair. Courage is ripped from the targets, causing disarray and a collapse of coherent resistance to the Tyranids, who exploit this to cause a complete rout that inevitably becomes an unmitigated slaughter as the swarm leap onto the fleeing troops and tear them apart, rewarding their cowardice with death and grisly consumption. The hive mind bloats the symbiote weapons and appendages of the swarm with new and horrific degrees of control, so that when a 
full tumultuous dash is underway. The bioforms can level volleys of fire with superlative accuracy. Their limbs are similarly infused and can be pushed beyond all normal tolerance, eliminating exhaustion and fatigue, so that even after the most frantic sprint, the tyrannid creatures find new life and mount a catastrophic charge into their targets. Laser-edged tendrils of psionic power pluck at nerves and grind viciously on nociceptors. Agony courses through the nervous system, stripping opponents of the ability to defend themselves or even fight back as the tyrannid hordes descend upon them. In this debilitated state, those wracked by this power are easy meat for the blades and teeth of the tyrannid forces and the anguish inflicted by this spell is replaced by the gross physical sorrow of being eviscerated, dismembered, and trampled beneath the hooves of the hive. A blast of potent psychic fury is directed at a single being, causing massive mental trauma, and unlike the universally known psionic ability to smite a target with psychic energy, the Tyranids can target even those hidden from view. For those with psychic abilities, the effects are even more catastrophic, because the trauma visited upon their brain is of such a scale that it can demolish entire areas and literally strip the very memories of their own abilities from them. Ordinarily, this is a terrible and spiteful enough deed, but on the battlefield, where a Psyker needs the full range of their abilities to fight the Tyranids, and tactics may even be dependent on these powers, the loss of such information can spell total disaster. A recent development in the arsenal of the Tyranid psychic aberrations, this horrendous power channels psionic energy directly into the target's living brain, seeking weaknesses to exploit. Where such physical frailty is found in the standard horror tactics of the Tyranid, rather than simply kill the target, vile psychological overkill sees the very cranial matter develop talons and fangs, becoming a rudimentary Tyranid bioform in its own right. This newborn horror then proceeds to gnaw and gouge, extracting itself from the hapless target's skull. The sight of one's fellows squealing in abject torment as their own brain chews its way to freedom and the emergence of this nightmare spawn is an experience that has left many stalwart warriors bereft of sanity. Whether this is a larval stage of some new tyrannid form or simply an expendable chunk of harvestable meat remains unknown. Such is the sheer potency of the hive mind and the titanic mass of each hive fleet that the various fleets have various abilities and skills to assist in their quest for biomass to consume, each of them uniquely developed for a specific purpose or theatre of war. This extends even to their psychic abilities, and each fleet has developed a unique psionic power to supplement those known to the entire Tyranid race. This high fleet can most easily be summarized in a single word, Stampede. The beasts of this fleet dive into combat at a rampaging dash, slamming into the prey and embracing their endless hunger and wanton rage. Indomitable and brutal, Behemoth is a wrecking ball of claws, fangs, hooves, and chitin, and the psychic power they employ inevitably enhances this purpose. The psychic monstrosity that deploys this power pours unremitting, frenzied, raw aggression into the bioforms, filling them with additional potency so that their organic weapons can gouge and tear with appalling new alacrity so that they can inflict the most grievous of wounds. This high fleet is almost the polar opposite of Behemoth. It operates with a dreadful alien cunning, a slyness of the most insidious proportions. The synapse beasts calculate and strategize, deploying, redeploying, flanking, feinting, 
waiting for the smallest flaw in tactics, the weakest point of deployment in which to exploit, and then in pour the tin in its swarm to shatter lines and utterly destroy the foe. The power of the Kraken's psychic aberrations flows out across the battlefield and seeps into the flesh of a desired target. The radiating emanations instantly draw the attention of the lower bioforms and the victim becomes an irresistible lure that drives the murderous beasts to impossible levels of effort and speed. The tyrannids surge forth and descend upon the cruelly marked forces whose doom is assured under a dreadful cascade of ripping claws and cleaving organic blades. In the lost myths of fable and myth from ancient Europa on Terra, the Gorgon was a, a mutant woman with venomous fangs and hair formed from living snakes, and this imagery lent itself perfectly to the naming of this fell hive fleet. The various broods of hive fleet Gorgon throb with potent toxins and spew corrosive spores that dissolve metal and melt flesh. Their every weapon and appendage weeps a brutal poisonous slime that is lethal to all forms of life. This venomous discharge constantly adapts and refines, ensuring its grisly purpose to overwhelm even the most sophisticated or arcane medical attention and even the most stalwart immune system, and thereby ensure all who stand before High Fleet Gorgon are rendered down into quivering piles of bubbling organic slurry to be repurposed as fresh raw tissue for the tyrannid race. The synapse brutes thrust forth their ghastly intellect, causing the bio-horrors under their control to secrete a new and warped version of their heinous toxins, one empowered with psychic corruption. These seeping venomous flows are vested by the immaterium itself and inflict catastrophic new levels of cellular damage for which there is virtually no defence. The seething swarms of the tyrannid race descend from space, pouring down onto the surface from orbit, but where the other fleets begin their relentless advance across the surface, the human gander bore down into the soil, expertly excavating vast tunnel networks, which they use to move swiftly, unseen and underfoot. Guided by their synapse organisms, the vast hordes of this fleet flow beneath the ground, hidden until the command to attack is broadcast, and then absolute terror and carnage ensue. When the Jormungandr tyrannids erupt from their tunnels, they take full advantage of the shock their emergence inevitably brings to cause utter panic. The foe is dragged down into the darkness to be ripped apart or quickly mutilated on the spot before they can re-establish their defences. The hive mind connects its will to the swarm and directs them towards a chosen target. The hordes are driven into a frenzied state by the psionic broadcast, and when they converge on the foe, they readily punch through armour and hardened defences in the maniac quest to sink their claws and fangs into organic flesh. As we have seen, the Tyranids have but one goal. The entire race, every bioform in the swarm, every single cell of every single horrendous beast, has but one ruling intent. Consume! But how does this drive fare against that which has no true physical form? The coagulated psychic energy physiques of those horrors from the warp dissipate when they have sustained sufficient disruption, denying the tyrannids their prize, the very means through which they replenish and increase their numbers. The Tyranids answered this dilemma with their usual simplistic but highly effective redesigned strategies. When faced with the babbling forces of chaos, High Fleet Kronos operates at range, far from the demonic weapons and claws of the ruinous powers, conserving their precious biomass as venom cannon, bioplasmic blasts, and other mighty organic artillery demolish the foe. 
and send them screaming back to whence they came. Psychic might flows into the synaptic link, refining the senses of the Kronos horrors, allowing them to seek even the most subtle of vulnerability and improving the accuracy of their barrages of biomissiles. The result is withering salvos of toxic and corrosive projectiles that rip into the enemy, causing horrendous casualties. The swarms of Hydra appear on the horizon and rush towards the defenders protecting their world. The first wave falls. Victory seems possible. The second wave falls. Victory seems assured. The subsequent waves see weapons overheating, ammunition running low, and as wave upon wave continues to flood across the battlefield, stampeding over their own shredded brethren, they gain ground every time until finally the full endless horde of Hydra sweep across the defenders and annihilate all. After which the fallen of both sides are rendered down and recycled, allowing the swarm to be reborn in even greater numbers. That is the full terror of a horde from High Fleet Hydra. A howl empowered by the might of the Immaterium rolls forth and is echoed by the beasts of the horde. The minor organisms add their own shrieks, but the titanic monstrous beasts add a particularly potent roar, and once united, this bellow causes the ground to quake and flesh to quiver. When the hybrid shockwave of sonic and psychic meets non-tyrannid creatures, it powers through every defence to literally shred cranial matter, demolishing the very minds of the foe and causing instant excruciating death. Finally, we reach the high fleet that has most benefited from all the experimentation and experience of all the high fleets that have come before it. What they have learned, Leviathan has mastered, while the other fleets are still horrendously effective in the reaping of organic matter, Leviathan is perhaps the most effective at it. When Leviathan slammed into the galactic plane, its bioforms were hardened against all trauma, and even the most simple gaunt could withstand barrages of fire that should have reduced it to mere shreds of scorched tissue. The bioforms also have an unerring accuracy. Their weapons, be they ranged or close quarter, seem to find their mark with considerably more efficacy. The psychers of Leviathan snatch hints of the monstrous synaptic imperatives that flood across the entire swarm, influencing, enhancing, and emboldening every single creature in the Horde. Where these blanket effects have a limited duration and only seem to manifest on occasion, the Leviathan psychers can apply these powers to smaller units or single beasts and can empower them again and again, choosing whatever imperatives best suits the swarm in certain areas of battle, and continually influence them with these abilities to ensure absolute and assured victory. Truly, the Tyranid are as much a lethal psychic threat as they are a physical one, but they face the iron will of the Imperium, and no Xeno's aberration no matter how numerous, cunning, or vile, can ever hope to defeat a people who fight beneath the benevolent guidance of the greatest psychic power in all the universe, the God Emperor of Mankind, beloved by all.